Welcome to lecture 9. In this lecture we'll take a look at how to integrate our AR app into the Strawberry Fields dashboard. Please be aware that we are using scripts that will be explained in later sections, so you might consider to come back to this lecture after you have finished these sections. Here we see the overall structure of the application. At the core still is our app.js script. We will remove the mockup data, but we will keep the part where we register our component and describe it. Also, we'll keep the helper functions. We'll add another script, which is called data provider. This is the script that actually takes the data from the database. So this is the real sensor information. Then of course, the app script needs to be embedded in the index.html file. Now, as we are working with modules, the app script can import data provider from the location where the script is stored. And also, data provider can export its function fetch data. Embedding the app script into the index.html file requires us to add the attribute type and set it to module and the attribute async and set it to false. Let's take a closer look at the data provider script. The script reuses a lot from what we already know from the dashboard script. So connecting to the database and retrieving data is as we have seen before. When importing the strawberry data utilities, we need to take care that we change the path because our AR application is located on a different location at the server. Looking at the fetch data function, we see we first instantiate a new variable called underscore sensor values. This is the object that will replace our old data object where we stored the mockup data. In fact, the fetch data function will hand over this object to our app script. Further, we fetch data in an async manner just as we did in the dashboard script. We await the response and JSON file it. Then we create the data frame using the strawberry data utilities, which we have imported. The data frame is the starting point for the values we want to store in our sensor values object. We do so by filtering out each of the sensor data types, put them in an array and select the last item in that array. That's the value we want to use. This is how the code looks for the temperature bar. So temp values is an array in which we store all temperatures from the data frame. And then we add the key temp bar to the sensor values object and give it the last item in the array as its value. The values for the soil and the air bar are constructed in the same manner. In our sensor, the light intensity is measured in lux. As a result, the sensor will return values between 0 and 64,000. Lux values are not very easy to comprehend and not so many people will have a clear understanding what it means when the lux value varies, for example, between 16 and 32,000. Therefore, we use this paper and the proposed algorithm to scale lux values into 10 steps. Filtering the light intensity data from the data frame follows the same strategy as before. However, we make sure not to include values below zero. Then we take the log 10 of the last value in our array and multiply it by 2. This will give us a number between 0 and 10. Further, we make sure that if the logged result is negative, it is set to 0. And finally, we can add the value to a new key, which we add to the sensor values object. We also limit the digits with the toPrecision method. Back in our app script in the init function, there's an important change. At first, we use the marker event to start the animation. Now we use the marker event to start both the bar generating loop and the animation. Then you will notice that the sensor values object now it's filled awaiting the fetch data method from the data provider script. Then the create attributes helper function is called using arguments now coming from our sensor values object instead of the data object. As a result, creating the bars is now async and will wait for the data to be retrieved from the database. However, we now also created a bug. In our first version, the marker found event was used to replay the animation, but now it's used to create the bars. 
This means that whenever the marker is found, new bars will be created, but the old ones still exist. So what we have to do to fix this bug is to first remove the existing bars and then create the new ones. At the top of our script, we add the boolean first marker. Initially, this is set to false because at the beginning of our session, the marker has not been found yet. At the beginning of our event listener function, we add an if statement to check if our first marker boolean is true. When it is, this means that bars are already created and we have to first remove them before we can create new ones. Removing the bars is quite similar to how we have created them. We create a loop iterating over the sensor data array. In each iteration, the bar name variable is assigned to the value of the item in the array. We know, when we created the bars, that the bar name was used as ID for the element. So now we can store the element in a new variable that I've called element to remove using the bar name as argument for the method getElementById. And then we can use the removeChild method on the bar area element. As argument we give in the element to remove in which we have stored the element that we want to remove. Iterating over all items in the sensor data array, this will remove all bars or all A box elements and also their children, which are the A text elements that contain the values. Then we close the loop and the if statement, and the rest of the script in which we create the bars and values will remain as it was. The only thing we need to add at the end of our event listener function is the expression in which we set our boolean to true. Let's take a look at the run through of our script. We declared the boolean first marker which is set to false. This means when the marker is found for the first time this boolean will be false and the script removing all bars will be skipped. So all bars will then be created and the boolean will be set to true. Now any next time the marker is found, the boolean will be true. Thanks to the if statement, now all bars will be removed and then created again. And because whenever new bars are created, also the sensor values object will be updated using the fetch data method in our data provider script. This means that whenever the marker is found again, the dashboard will be refreshed with the latest data from our database. And that's it, now we have a fully integrated AR application in our dashboard.